In this video, I'll show you how to paint a Raven Guard Space Marine. Let's get started with this Raven Guard then. Exciting day here. It's new brush day. Windsor Newton Series 7 Size 1. So I'll uh, pop a link to these in the description. And we're going to start off with all the leather on this model. The colour we're using for that is Rhinox Hide. So we want to get all the pouches. Just want to base coat them all. Oh, we've got the belt, we've got all the strapping as well. So as you can see from this model, it's a black prime. I used uh, Chaos Black Spray. And then what I did is I just watered down some bad and black and just brushed it all over the model. And that just unifies the black colour because Chaos Black and Abaddon Black are different colours. So if I did need to go in and tidy up later on, if I make a mistake or I've been a little bit messy, uh, then I can do pretty easily. So I'm going to carry on making sure I've got a nice coat of Rhinox Hide on all the leather. This might mean that in some places I need to do uh, two coats. And if it is, then I'll do that. If not, then happy days. And don't forget, you've got all the strapping, all things like this here on the grenade holder, etc. So work your way around the model, get all that done in Rhinox Hide, and then we'll come back and start to highlight. Once that Rhinox Hide is dry, we'll start the first highlight, and we're just going to use some Doomball Brown for this. I'm going to go for a little bit of a ready leather, which is kind of a warm colour, and that's going to contrast nicely with the cold colour we're going to do the armour. So where you can on the model, and where you've got a hard edge, just run the brush along it like that. Don't worry if it's a bit of a thick highlight, because we're going to put another one on top of it uh, after this. And what you'll see is that as that paint dries, it'll blend down into the, the Rhinox hide underneath. So, like I said, it's new brush day, which means I've got a really nice point on my brush. So you can use that to just draw those highlight lines on some of the strapping really nicely, really easily. And same for around there. On the uh, on the holster. So work your way around the leather, any edges, any uh, bits where you want to put a highlight in. So for example in here we've got a bit of a depression, a bit of a light depart. There, just going to pull some paint in there. That just gives us some uh, additional areas of interest. So work your way around, get all those edges highlighted, and we'll come back for the final highlight next. And the last highlight where we just want to put on the sharpest edges, just a little bit of scrag brown. And again, this is where having a decent point on the brush will help. So I just want to kind of on the lowest parts there, and then on the kind of corner of the packs, just on the bits that are catching the most light. You don't want to overdo this part, but this just kind of adds to that brightness on the, the leather. Gives a really nice effect. So take your time, work your way around the rest of the model using the scrag brown sparingly. So it's a nice colour, but if you use too much, it'll, it'll really overpower the effect we're going for. So I'll leave you there to finish that and use it at your discretion, and we'll come back and we'll move on to the next stage. So that leather's looking really good now in contrast with the black armour. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the metallics and the silver metallics. So I'm going to use iron hand steel for this. Um, I'm just going to paint this over all the bits that I want to be metal. So we're looking at the gun mainly. And you can probably see that I've changed to a, an older brush. And that's because I don't want to get metallics all over my, uh, my shiny new Windsor & Newton. So I'm just going to work around all the metal bits with this, taking my time not to go over the gun casing. Now if I do go over the gun casing, it's not the end of the world. I'll just go back in and tidy up with the bad and black. So you can just see there, in some places it's covering in, in one coat, and in other places it's taking a little bit. I'm probably going to need two coats to do that, so I'll make sure to get that done. So that's the weapon. We've also got the grenades here. So let's paint them off. We've got a little skull icon in there, which I'll do off cam because it's a little fiddly for me to get in there and show you how to do it on camera. 
we've got um, the aerials coming off the backpack. I do love these um, new kits. Because they've got so many cool details on them. And then we've just got the vents on the back of the backpack here, which we'll just paint over as well. And you can see there's all these bits that add a nice contrast to the model. These are bright bits against the kind of dark, stealthy nature of the of the Raven Guard and the black armour. So work your way around, get all your silver metallics done, and then we'll come back and we'll shade it down. Shading the silver is pretty simple. A little bit of null oil and just pop it on. Make sure it doesn't pull too much, just want to catch on the natural shape of the model. Now the reason I'm putting the null oil on now rather than tidying up any black I need to is that any spillages from null oil will leave the armour kind of dirty looking and not very smooth. So get your null oil on, let it dry, then we'll highlight the uh, the silver, then we we'll repair the black. Because this is going quite quickly and quite well. Uh, basic colours of the Raven Guard, but doesn't mean that they don't look absolutely great and really effective. So finish up this null oil shading, get all the silver bits, and then we'll come back uh, and we'll do the next bit. Make sure that iron hand steel and null oil combo is dry, and then we'll go on to highlight the, the metal. So for this, I'm gonna use chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Love this color for highlighting silver. And in the first instance, make sure there's not too much on your brush. You just want to, all those areas where you can hit the raised edges, make sure you do. See, it's a really nice highlight color for silver. I like to do on the nozzle, I just like to do like an area highlight like that. Because it just looks like that's where the uh, light will catch it. So work your way all the way around the model, getting all your metallics highlighted. Then once you finish getting your metallics highlighted, what I suggest you do is go back in and where you've kind of overspilt a little with some of the previous stages, get that black fixed up. A little split hair on my brush there, which is probably annoying for you as it is annoying for me. A little bit of paint drying on there that we don't really want. So work your way around get all the silver highlighted and then go back in and make sure that you use some of bad and black just to tidy up any areas where you've overspilt with either the null oil uh, or the silver colors. Once everything's tidied up you can see it's starting to starting to pop a little so we want to get moving on the black but what I want to make sure of we've got two different types of blacks so we've got the armor we've also got the kind of the weapon casing and the, um, I guess the joints within the armor. So what I'm going to do for the joints, I'm just going to take some Mechanicus Standard Grey and I'm going to work that over some of the most pronounced joints so that there's a little bit of a, a highlight on them and they don't get lost in with the rest of the armor. I don't normally paint the joints when I do Space Marines, I just leave them black, but because the armor is black on this uh, this Raven Guard, I think it's worth doing. So just little thin lines there. And the other thing I want to use the Mechanica Standard Grey for is all the weapon casings. And again, that's to differentiate the weapon casings from the, the kind of the main armor. So where you can use the shape of the model, just use the tip of the brush just to get the outline of the weapon casing on there. Where you've got the kind of bigger areas on, you can use, like I said, you can use the shape of the weapon to get those nice, crisp uh, edge highlights. And again, we're using the Mechanica Standard Grey here just to kind of differentiate us away from what's gonna be the kind of colder grey of the armor. So if you go a little bit thick, don't worry, you've got uh, the Abaddon Black that you can go back in with and just fix uh, any mistakes you make. So just carry on, don't be too worried. So I'm just going to finish off the weapon and we'll come back and I think we'll do the armour next. The first highlight colour we're going to use for the armour is going to be Incubi Darkness. Now, 
I find Incubi by Darkness quite a funny colour. You need to water it down a little bit so that it flows from your brush when you're doing these edges. But I also find it it doesn't necessarily cover that well first time round. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna look for all the edges in the armour. We're gonna paint them with Inky by Darkness. I'm going to work our way around the model, catching all those kind of edges. Now, where you've got a sharp edge like here on the front of the armour, you can use the use the shape of the brush like we did for that for that chrome. And if it doesn't show up too much, then just pop on and just give it another another coat of Inky by Darkness afterwards. Um, but what you'll start to see it might not show up on camera. Uh, I may have to lighten in post production so you can actually see it because it is quite a quite a thin color. So work your way around the model, popping this on on those most prominent edges, where you can use the shape of the model, but sometimes you won't be able to do that. So you just need to use a steady hand. Now, I'm actually bracing uh, my elbows on my chair arms and kind of like my my wrists on the table to do this, just to help me do that nice sharp line. So we're going to work our way around all the armour with this Inky by Darkness. Um, Inky by Darkness. It's Dark Reaper. Uh, Inky by Darkness is a good base if you're doing Chaos Black, uh, so Chaos Space Marines. Uh, but we're not. We're doing the Loyalist Raven Guard, so we want to start with Dark Reaper. So Dark Reaper uh, is the colour we're using. So just work your way around all those edges with that Dark Reaper, and then we'll come back in and we'll pop the next highlight on there. When that Dark Reaper is done, the next highlight colour we're going to use is Thunderhawk Blue. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to aim for the insides of that Inky by Darkness. So we want to go for a th kind of a thinner edge, if we can, where we can. So again, this is just a simple case of working your way around the model. Perhaps a good time to think about as well which company this chap's going to be from. I'm going to do him from the third company, which is the Ghost Stalkers, which I think is great for the new Infiltrator kits. So that means he'll have a red band on that one shoulder guard he's got there. And so all I'm doing now really is working my way all the way around the model using the same techniques I used uh, before with the Thunderhawk Blue, where I can catch an edge. Make sure I catch an edge. So things like on the top of the backpack here, just you can work your way around there. And this will start to brighten the armor up and it'll contrast nicely because it'll be quite a cold highlight uh, against the warmth of the leather. So work your way all the way around the model. When you're happy you've finished that highlighting, we'll come back. Don't worry if you make any mistakes, I've made one in there. You can just fix that with a little bit of a bad and black and a steady hand. So there we are. I leave you to your model to get finishing up the the highlight, and we'll come back and have a look at if we need to pop one more on there. See, the armor's really starting to pop out a little bit now. If you want to, and I'm just going to do it on this model to show you, maybe you want to reserve this one for perhaps your, your characters or your HQs, you can just add a little bit more of a spot to some of these sharpest places. So a bit of Fenrisian grey and sort of like top of the knee there and there. Just those kind of sharpest edges just to really define them. And kind of brighten the model a little. So use this really sparingly. Again, you oh, a bit too much on there. We'll go back over that later on. Um, use it sparingly and just pop it on those kind of sharpest bits that you wanna you wanna make pop. So carry on doing that. We'll come back uh, and then next up we'll do the um, we'll do the company marking and then we'll do all the lenses. And I think this Raven Guard is done. So a little bit of Mephiston red for the uh, company marking on the outside of the shoulder. So you want to just take your time, be really careful marking this on. You may need to do 
two coats but just be careful not to go over anything you've already finished painting if you do though you've got the tools to get back in and fix it up so nice and straightforward take your time enjoy the process and don't rush we're on the home stretch so you can use the shape as well so you can just move the brush down through there take your time when you kind of come to these bits towards the back so I'm going to finish this off if you need to do another coat then pop another coat on there I'm just going to finish making sure this is as vibrant as possible going over the black so possibly do two coats anyway just to get the brightness up and then we'll highlight it next I'm going to highlight that red with a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet now I'm going to kind of paint over most of it rather than do a line highlight So all the bits that aren't sort of in shadow behind something, I'm going to give this uh, Evil Sun Scarlet covering too. And what that does, that just brightens that red up a little bit, which again provides a nice bit of contrast with the with the rest of the model. So let that dry. We'll pop an edge highlight on it next, um, and then we'll do the lenses. And we've just got this little feather down there to do as well. And for the red highlight, we're just going to use a little bit of Wild Rider Red. It's a bit of a mouthful. And what we're looking to do is we want to poke the edge of the brush in there like that. And just pull it along the kind of the edges there of the, of the rim of the shoulder pad just to give that nice reflection of light. There we are. Nice, easy and straightforward highlighting. So we'll do the lenses next and we'll do that feather and then the Raven Guard is done, ready for the table. So there's an array of lenses and little light flashes on this model. So what I'm going to do is I want to use some Corax white and I'm going to just pop that over all the lenses that are on the model. So we've got all these on the weapon. Quite difficult to see some of them but also we've got some bits on the armor so we've got these two here and we've got these two on the back as well of the backpack so take your time working around trying to spill that corax white anywhere work your way around pop it on all the lenses along the model and then you may need to do a second coat in some areas in which case do so then we'll come back and we'll get those lenses painted up so the two colours we're going to use for the lenses, uh, first off we're going to use Blood Angel's red contrast paint and all I'm going to do is just pop that over the white marks and obviously we've got all the other bits on here as well. Nice and simple to start and then for the green we're going to use Warp Lightning contrast paint. And that's exactly the same technique. I just want to pop it over all the white bits. And as that dries, it'll give that nice effect of light. So there we are. Let that dry off. And the last thing we've got to do is that feather. And the feathers are really nice sort of accoutrement for the Raven Guard. Raven feathers are black, so all we want to do is a bit of staggered on stale green. And we're just gonna kind of highlight the edges leaving the black in there. A little bit in there as well. And then uh, the last kind of really edge highlight is kind of so tech green. And what we're gonna do is just want to pop that on the kind of extreme outsides just like that. Again, giving us just a different tone of black to the model. So there we are. This Raven Guard's complete. Yes, he's missing his head, but I thought it was easier to paint his head off cam than it is on cam. Uh, there'll be a tutorial for that. Link above. Otherwise, we'll get him on the turntable and see how he looks. 
So there we have it. This Raven Guard is done and ready for action. You can see I've put some decals on, just the squad number on the knee pad, the Raven Guard icon, and also the tactical marking on the shoulders. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it for you. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. I really appreciate your support. And like I said through the video, all my recommended equipment links are down in the description. Don't forget, you can also get up to 20% from all your wargaming at Goblin Gaming. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.